What's up guys, Intellitech Studios here, and today we're going to show you how to access the belt and the brush roll on your Eureka Upright Vacuum. Now keep in mind, there are hundreds of thousands of Eureka vacuums that have been created over the various years that the brand has existed. So, obviously this tutorial will not be helpful for every single Eureka vacuum, but most of the Eureka vacuums that have been made in the last 20 years that look kind of like this, that are the more budget models, those should essentially uh, this video should be helpful for that so if you have like a Eureka smart bag or like an old FNG bag Eureka this process might be a bit different but the easiest way to tell this video will be helpful for you is if your machine has two screws on the top cover like this if so chances are this video will help you so this will show you how to replace the belt on your Eureka vacuum this particular machine ugh, this particular Eureka machine is a Eureka The Boss Power Plus, and this particular model, in case you are wondering if you happen to have this exact same machine, is the Eureka model 4703 Type F-1. So if you have one of these machines, then this tutorial will definitely work for that machine. So we're going to start off by testing out the vacuum. Now if your machine, either the brush roll doesn't spin. So if, you're, if you turn on the vacuum and this brush roll is not spinning at all, or if the brush roll has a very harsh sound, like for example what I'm going to demonstrate right now, headphone warning. If you notice the brush roll is making a buzzing sound and it also doesn't sound very pleasant. So there are two screws on the top of the cover of this particular Eureka. We're just going to undo these with a standard Phillips head screwdriver. And you can use a drill if you want, but you want to set it to the lowest torque setting possible. This is drilling into plastic and you don't want to strip out the screw threads. If your screws are badly rusted, you may have some trouble getting them out, so just keep that in mind. Once we got these two screws out, we're just going to grab this cover. In this case, it's white on gray, so you can easily see where this cover ends. But we're just going to lift it straight up and pull it away from the machine. So here's the cover, and here is the brush hole and belt. Very simple. So we're going to go ahead and grab the brush roll and pull it straight out and loop the belt out from the brush roll. Now these brush rolls actually do have serviceable ends. So if I, let me make sure this is in frame. So if I take these end caps off, they pull right off and you can actually see the bearings on the inside. Now if you're not very experienced with messing with bearings and stuff, then you're likely just going to want to replace this brush roll as a whole assembly if this is not spinning right. But if there's any thread or strings or anything like that, you want to get that off and possibly drop some oil in here. You can repack these bearings, but chances are, if you don't know how to do that, then you may want to just go ahead and replace the brush roll as a whole assembly, or take it to your local vacuum shop and have them do it for you. So again, we want to pull off these ends, make sure there's no hair or thread or anything built up in here. And while we're doing this, we want to make sure there's no hair on the brush roll. So if there's any hair wrapped around the bristles, or especially around the belt area or any of these crevices, we want to just rip all that hair off. You should be able to pull it off with your fingers. You can also use some scissors, a box cutter, a blade, or a seam ripper to get the hair off of this brush roll, and make sure the brush roll is spinning properly. Now, in this case, the brush roll is spinning, but I can hear and feel some noise and some resistance from this end. So, in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and replace the brush roll as the whole assembly. So, that's what I'm going to do. Yes, this brush roll does look worse, but as, as you can see, it actually does spin a lot smoother. And, same story, we can see still not great, but it is better than this one. I'm not really too worried about this machine, but if this is your machine, again, if you're having some issues with your brush roll, then you may want to take it to your local vacuum shop and have them do some work on it for you. So the belt is right here. In order to pull the belt off the motor spindle, we're just going to grab the belt and pinch it against the motor shaft back here and sort of loop it around this little groove at the end and just slide it right off. So this particular belt is a well, according to the belt, it's a 7-Eleven belt. I don't know if you can see that. So, unfortunately, I do not believe you can buy replacement belts from 7-Eleven. But if you get a Eureka-style U-belt, that should fit on this particular machine, at least if I remember correctly. And, obviously, look up your machine's model number, and you can figure out exactly what type of belt goes with your machine. If it's a machine that's built very similar to this, to where this tutorial is actually helping you get into it, then it probably uses a Eureka style U belt. But again, your specific machine may vary. So we're gonna go ahead and simulate replacing the belt by taking the belt and throwing it off screen. 
And then you want to take your brand new belt, because if this belt is stretched out or it's snapped, then you're going to want to replace this. If you've been using your vacuum for over a year, you definitely want to replace this. You should generally replace these belts every six months to a year, given you know how often you actually use the vacuum and how long you use the vacuum when you use it, if that makes sense. Obviously, depending on your home, depending on the type of carpet, all that stuff can have an effect on how fast the belt wears out. But if you're not sure, go ahead and buy a new pack of belts and compare the old belt to the new one by taking it off. If the new belt can fit inside the old belt and there's like a significant back gap between the new belt, or the, I should say the old belt and the new belt, then the old belt is stretched out and you'll have to replace it with a newer belt. When you replace it with a newer belt, it's got the process of putting it on is going to be very similar. You just want to kind of pinch this and slide it in this little groove so it goes right on the motor shaft. If this motor shaft is covered in excess rust, you're going to want to use a piece of sandpaper or a seating stone to get the rust off here. But again, if you're not experienced in doing that, take it to your local vacuum shop and have them do it for you because that obviously could potentially go wrong if you do that incorrectly. But it is something you can do if there's a lot of rust on here and the belts are slipping and snapping off. Take it to your local vacuum shop so they can clean off this spindle and fit a new belt and brush roll for you. Once you have the belt, we're going to go ahead and loop the side of the brush roll with the belt groove right here over the belt, just like this. And we're going to turn this so I can accurately put it back in. And we're going to have to stretch the belt. Obviously, if it's a new belt, you're going to have to stretch it even more and push it into this side of the housing. You can see right there. We kind of push that in place. And then now take the other side and push it in. On these Eureka vacuums, fitting the brush roll back on is very, very easy. These are octagon shaped, at least again on this particular machine. These are octagon shaped, so they slide in super easily. The notches are relatively easy to get back in place. So it's relatively foolproof as far as putting a new brush roll back in. The main problem you're going to have is if you have an older Eureka vacuum and you're trying to find a new brush roll, nowadays that's going to be a little bit harder to find. But Again, look up your model number or take it to your local vacuum shop and have them help you find the right part that you need if your brush roll needs replacement, if the bristles are worn up or it's not spinning properly. So once we got this in, we want to turn it by hand with our hands a few times. Did I mention to make sure the vacuum is unplugged while you do this? See, but I can leave my vacuum plugged in because I am a professional. Case in point. As we can see, the vacuum and the belt and brush roll are spinning very fluidly with very little noise. So that's exactly what we want. You shouldn't do that. You should wait until this is all back together. But I can do that to demonstrate the process. So now that this is all back in, we're going to go ahead and take our cover. And again, while you're in here, it's a good time to check for any debris in here and clear that out. Check this little section right down here for clogs, depending on your Eureka vacuum that's maybe further up the machine or something like that. Just make sure that's all good. Make sure this cover is all clean. You can always wash this if you want to. I wouldn't recommend washing the brush roll because, again, the bearings in here could potentially get dried out and rust out. Especially in this case, you can tell rust is unfortunately a problem. But this isn't a machine that I plan on giving to a customer or anything, so I don't have to worry too much about that. If this thing explodes while it's in my possession, I'm not worried about that. But obviously, in your case, you want to make sure that there isn't any rust on the brush roll and make sure that you replace that with a new brush roll. So now we're going to take this cover and we're going to set it down and kind of line it up. And just push it back into place. This little seam right here should be completely flush and just kind of push it on make sure it's flush at all angles. And as we can see it fit in place just fine. There shouldn't be any real resistance it should just kind of slip right back on and now as we can see it is on properly. So now we just take our two screws put it back in here and put these back in. Again, just a basic Phillips head screw, two screws, again, on this particular unit. Because, again, this tutorial is for most Eureka vacuums, but probably not all of them, as some of them, this process is a bit different. But the overall process is the same. It's just a matter of where the screws are on your model. Some models don't even have screws. Some models have clips and that sort of thing. There, it, it is different depending on the model. But for one of these more budget Eurekas, this process is pretty much like that. And now it's all back in. Let's pretend that I just now plugged it in and that it wasn't plugged in this whole time because that's what you should be doing. And we're gonna try it out. And as you can see, the brush roll now doesn't make nearly as much noise. So my specific problem of the brush roll making too much noise was fixed by replacing the brush roll. Now obviously this would also be a good time to replace the belt, 
which, as you can see, I've done that as well. So, now that this has gotten a belt and brush roll service, we're going to go ahead and give this machine a super quick test run. Just do 100% confirm that it is working. This machine is unfortunately very loud, but, uh, you know, old cheap vacuum, what can you do about that? And obviously make sure that your height adjustment, which is green on this model, is properly adjusted to your specific type of carpet. So, I hope this tutorial was helpful in helping you change out and or service your belt and brush roll on your Eureka Upright Vacuum. This was Intellitech Studios. Again, if this specific tutorial didn't help you with your exact vacuum, my apologies. Obviously, every specific Eureka is different. But hopefully, this example should be the one that's applicable to hopefully most people watching this video. Hence the title of this being the process on most Eurekas. So, this is Intellitech Studios signing out. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and hopefully it was helpful, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good one. Peace.